Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, we will look into different forms and different types of security controls. If you recall your school days, you must have read something about the different types and forms of matter. When, when you know that matter exists in three different forms, solid, liquid and gas. It's not only three, there are other forms as well discovered in this universe like uh, plasma and you know subatomic particles and other things but mainly three forms solid liquid gas and there are three type of material material we know matter may exist as an element as a pure form or some compound or mixture we are not talking science here but uh, it's kind of easy for us to relate concepts uh, when we talk information system we talk of uh, the form of control which exists in administrative, technical and uh, physical control basically. And there are different, uh, different type of controls, right? So we will discuss all those things when I will go on my drawing board. Before, before we discuss security controls, we should know that these controls are discussed when we do the risk assessment uh, of any organization. And to do risk assessment, the document which we refer is NIST 839, right? So NIST 839 talks about the risk management, uh, overall information security risk management of a company or on a, of an organization. 837 talks about risk management framework, wherein 830 is, is a specific about doing the risk assessment, right? So if you know the details of these different different this documentation how they are in a hierarchy i will recommend all of you to watch my past videos basically past four videos uh if you if you uh, refer you will get a complete understanding now coming to uh coming to the topic here the type and forms of uh, security control let's uh, go to the drawing desk as you see here there are two different uh, uh, sub tree I have uh, I have put here in the drawing and uh, these are uh, the form forms of control and type of control forms are easy to understand it's very self-evident so you may have some physical control the building facility you know the reception area or some type of gate man trap so all those things are physical controls right your HVAC system um, uh, and what else like your generator so these things are uh, physical uh, controls then you have technical and logical control when you put some encrypting device you put some firewalls you introduce some some technical uh, uh, controls in, in the form of uh, clipping levels like the number of maximum failed attempt someone can do on a system so those kind of things are technical control and administrative controls are like policies and procedures, hiring, background checks, data classification, labeling, security awareness training, uh, personal control, testing, all those things are administrative in nature. So administrative controls are basically uh, der is derived from the information security policy, which is uh, NIST 800, what, 853, right? NIST 853, uh, is basically the information the, the the parent of the information security policy of a company right so this number also you should keep in mind so 839 risk information security risk management of an, of an organization 837 is risk management framework 830 is risk assessment and 853 is the overall information security management of a company and when you do an assessment for the uh, for the information security controls, then you refer 853 A, A for assessment. So that's why we append there. So these are the security control forms. They may exist in the form of physical control, some technical control or administrative control. When it comes to the type of controls, so these are like these seven types of controls. And one control may be viewed as uh, a combination of two types right so if you look here uh, you know uh, in my example which i have derived from cybix 9th edition book so preventive control and detective control so some of the controls you will see that they are in both the category both the types 
right so if you if you look into preventive so the name suggests that this is deployed to stop some unwanted or unauthorized activity things like separation of duty job rotation data lake leakage prevention penetration testing auditing even uh, to deploy a firewall or intrusion detection to uh, you know sorry intrusion prevention system so these are all things to prevent the uh, the the attack or prevent some sort of uh, unauthorized access so uh, so these are preventive uh, preventive control now deterrent are something which will not prevent as such but it will discourage right so deterrents are applied to discourage the attacker and this is basically um, like uh, in the form of some security guard camera even some dogs uh, you know behind the perimeter so these are all deployed to discourage so they are deterrent what are the detective controls detective controls are deployed to discover or detect unwanted or unauthorized activity so here you see that guards are an example of both deterrent and detective right uh, job rotation job rotation could be a preventive measure as well and a detective measure as well right so there so uh, when we think of the type of controls we have to think very broadly and uh, uh, there is no single answer for one type of control it could be many type of control uh, you know one uh, one control may be of maybe addressing some prevention some detection and some uh, some you know deterrent part as well right what is compensating control compensating control is the alternate control like uh, you have a disaster recovery plan so that's your con compensating control or you have a backup system the example could be like um, you have a you have a file uh, in a database right so you put some control that no one can delete the file but someone deleted the file right so uh, the first control failed which was uh, which was the preventive control right there was some prevention some database security that was violated and someone deleted the file now what is the compensating control the compensating comp control could be that you have a backup system where the file is backed up and you can restore that file like the last uh, 24 hours if the backup is taken daily so, so last 24 hours backup you can restore so that could be your compensating control now what is the what is corrective control now backup system can also be viewed as corrective control because when you are when you are uh, restoring the backup after the restoration of the backup the application functioning is corrected or uh, its required components are put in place so that it can function properly so so basically corrective control either repair or restore or correct you know the environment to return the system to normal it's a mostly it's a part of the incident management cycle that we correct uh, things as part of fixing the incident now what is recovery recovery is the extension of corrective controls but have more advanced complex abilities like false tolerance tolerance device the rate levels which we talk about hot warm and cold sites so those are recovery uh, controls recovery controls is also viewed uh, in terms of uh, the autom automated way uh, a system can self heal uh, by itself so that's the that's the part of recovery control and what are the directives i think directive should be the first one before preventive because it's uh, it's mostly in the form of uh, administrative control like the security policies escape route monitoring supervision guidance from a security guard so these are all directive controls i hope like this uh, this tree will help you to have a mental map in to understand these forms and types of control but the more you practice questions on this uh, topic the more insight you will get uh, on how to answer the correct uh, option now when you have security control then you do security control assessment now security control assessment is basically basically checking uh, if the controls are implemented properly and they are achieving the desired objective 
and if there is an incident then we have restored the control again uh, to achieve the required baseline or not so that's security control assessment so generally and security control assessment is a process implemented by federal agencies but as we know that uh, it's everywhere in any organization they, they do have a security control assessment process now this security control assessment is based on this 853 as i said uh, 853 if you go back to my earlier videos there i have explained that uh, NIST 853 which is here if you see in my drawing this is NIST 853 uh, the latest version is revision 5 which was published in September 2020 now this talks about security and privacy control for information system and organization which can be taken as is uh, to act as a information security policy document for a company or we can tailor and um, modify it to our needs. Now, this 853 has a parallel document 853A, which is the guide for assessing the security controls, right? So 853 is the security control. 853A is assessment of the security control, which I'm discussing here in this, in this video, the topic of this current video, right? So security control assessment is the formal evaluation of a security infras individual mechanism against a baseline of reliability accept, uh, expectation basically. So whatever baseline we set for something, we do an assessment for it against the controls which we have deployed to achieve the baseline. <clears throat> so what is the goal of security control assessment is to ensure the effectiveness of security mechanism, uh, to evaluate the quality and thoroughness of the risk management process and produce a report of the relative strength and weakness of the required security infrastructure. So these are the major top level goals which we try to achieve as part of security control assessment. Now monitoring and measurement. What is monitoring and measurement? Monitoring and measurement is a part of the overall risk management process. Right. So, so if a security controls benefit can't be quantified, evaluated or compared, then it doesn't actually provide any security. This is the rule of thumb for any, any uh, security control. We have al al also seen this topic discussed when I was explaining um, the cost of safeguard. Like the cost of safeguard should not exceed the value of the asset we are going to protect. Right. So it's a, it's a, it's a similar sister concept that the security control should be quanti quantifiable. It should like, uh, we should be able to evaluate or we should be able to compare it. Then, uh, then we, it's called the security control. Now, when we do monitoring and measurement, basically what we do, we, we, we kind of, uh, create a risk register or log to identify risk, to identify the severity and probability of the risk we respond to what response we expect for us to do against the risk and we track the pro progress that's called the risk register the other thing we do is to we create risk matrix or heat map which is in the form of some graph chart sometimes they are labeled, labeled as uh, qualitative risk assessment and uh, it could be in the form of matrix you know um, it, you know the matrix could have can have probability and damage potential columns and uh, you can have a heat map view which will give you um, basically an idea of how the risk uh, risk health is for the organization or for the system we are doing the risk assessment. Now, enterprise risk management program is basically, um, if, if whenever we say enterprise risk management program, basically what we are referring is, we are referring 839, right? So let me write it down uh, in a big letter here. So enterprise risk management program is basically derived from this NIST 839 document and uh, it talks about how uh, the, the enterprise is managing its own, it's the risk management exercise, right? Based on its, uh, its uh, level of maturity, it could be of these five steps uh, or five levels, we can say. The first one is ad hoc, then preliminary, then defined, integrated and optimized. There are few keywords you have to um, you have to keep in mind 
because this is and this is something which is sensitive to exam questions may come from this uh, this topic risk maturity model uh, this is similar to cmm we will discuss in stlc and when we go to the software domain so ad hoc is basically chaotic you don't have any enterprise risk management program effectively defined you know uh, and everything is based on uh, you know the the approach which is which i learned from cybex ninth edition book is the seat of the pant approach like okay we know that things will take care by themselves there are people who will manage it that kind of attitude is ad hoc then we have preliminary like there are few people who have taken some steps to formalize certain things it's called a loose attempt but it's not fully endorsed by senior management and it's basically um, a kind of uh, operational improvement program which 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 looks like an enterprise risk management program for a, on a very 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 low level basically then you have defined like you have common standard for risk framework you have uh, taken a risk management framework uh, 837 then we can say that okay you are in a defined stage so at defined stage at least you have to consider some framework right so if the question comes in exams like a company has taken 837 so what is the minimum risk majority model it could be it could be at least at the defined level that we have defined something now integrated is that when risk management of you know operations are integrated into business processes right so it's kind of uh, a full endorsement with uh, the business stakeholder and the information security team right then we call this uh, at an integrated stage even the word shows integration so what are we are integrating the business processes and the risk management operations right so this is something you should keep in mind optimized is when risk management focuses on achieving business objective right now you have developed uh, the whole evolution of risk management has come to a stage that uh, that uh, the CISO of the company of the company chief information security officer is called in every uh, business discussion right and uh, whenever we do any business move business move like merger and acquisition or uh, uh, you know starting a new software development or anything then the risk management process is followed then we say that okay we are in an optimized stage this is basically all about um, the security control and security control assessment and how enterprise risk management can be viewed from a maturity point of view i hope you like this video and if you like this video Put a thumbs up that's one way to sub to support my channel support my work and subscribe to my channel for similar content i hope to see you again in my next video thanks and best of luck for your exams